My name is Sophia, and at 31 years old, I'm employed part-time at a local supermarket. As November unfolds, the pace picks up, signaling the approach of the year's end. Manager, I need to discuss taking some time off for Christmas. Would that be possible? I inquire. Quite unusual for you to request time off, Sophia, the manager remarks. Well, my husband and I are considering spending Christmas at his parents' place this year. I'll need the 24th and 25th off, I explain. Oh, I see. That's perfectly fine. You've been a dedicated worker, Sophia. Your help is much appreciated, the manager responds. Isn't your husband's family quite a distance away? You're a local, right? The manager asks. Yes, I'm from the neighboring town, but my husband hails from Boston, I confirm. Boston, that's quite the journey, the manager observes. It is, unfortunately. Due to circumstances, we haven't had the chance to introduce Alexander yet, I explain. I understand now. You definitely should go and visit. Family comes first, the manager nods. Thank you. I really appreciate your understanding. I express my gratitude. Alexander is my son, now two years old, and he's currently enrolled in a child care center. When he was born, certain societal issues made it challenging to introduce him to our extended family, and we haven't found the right moment since. But things have started to settle down recently, and Christmas seemed like the perfect opportunity. My husband, Lucas, works as a medical technician at a hospital, so getting time off has been tricky, which is why we're particularly eager to make this trip happen. Think you'll be able to swing some time off for Christmas? Lucas asks as we sit down for a late dinner once Alexander is fast asleep. Yeah, I should be good. And you? I respond. Yeah, I got the green light from my manager, I assure him. Later that evening, Lucas brings up a call from his dad that he missed on his way home. My dad always calls with news. Mom's more on the quiet side. She usually leaves the communication to him, he remarks. True, your dad's always so upbeat. Remember when we first told him about our marriage? He was so welcoming and chatty. Your mom's more reserved, though, I reflect. I hope this visit helps us connect more with her. Lucas dials his dad back. Hey, dad, what's up? Got it, I'll talk to Sophie about it. Okay, sure thing. Hanging up, he turns to me. Dad's really looking forward to meeting Alexander. He can't stop talking about it. And he said if there's anything you need, just let him know. I wonder how things will go once we're there, but it's good they're excited. My parents also insisted we go this year, saying it's time to introduce Alexander. But you do like your parents too, don't you? I ask Lucas. We're both navigating the same waters, aren't we? He responds. Finally, the day we've been anticipating, our return to Lucas's family home arrives. Pulling up on Christmas morning after a four-hour drive, we're greeted by the sight of Lucas at house just before noon. I notice my sister-in-law's family's car parked, indicating their early arrival. Merry Christmas. We announce upon entering, met with father-in-law's warm smile. Good drive? Take it easy today, he advises, holding Ava, my niece, in his arms. Ava, you've gotten so big, I remark. I'm six now, she proudly announces. Wow, already in elementary school, I reply. Look, there's Alexander, she says, stepping down to greet him. Their exchange of smiles is adorable. Come on in, come on in. Father-in-law welcomes us into the house. In the living room, we find sister-in-law Isabella and her husband. Isabella's husband offers a smile, but Isabella's expression remains neutral as she greets us. Merry Christmas, he says, while Isabella stays silent. Feeling a tad uncomfortable, I brush it off when Lucas enters, exchanging Christmas greetings with them. Henry, Isabella, Merry Christmas, he says. Isabella's demeanor changes instantly as she engages with us, though I can't shake the feeling of being ignored. But neither Lucas nor Isabella's husband seems to notice. Maybe I'm just imagining things. I reassure myself, taking a seat in the living room. Lucas, could you watch Alexander for a moment? I'll lend a hand to mother-in-law in the kitchen, I suggest. I'm fine, really, he insists. It's important to pitch in when we can. I insist, leaving Alexander in Lucas' care before heading to the kitchen. 
Isabella still doesn't acknowledge me as I pass her, but I decide not to dwell on it. In the kitchen, I find mother-in-law and greet her with a cheerful Merry Christmas. Offering to help, I'm taken aback when she glares at me and gruffly tells me I'm in the way. Confused, I watch her leave for the living room, where I can hear her greeting Lucas with warmth, seemingly oblivious to our earlier interaction. What's happening here? First, with my sister-in-law, and now my mother-in-law? Have I somehow offended them? I can't think of anything I might have done wrong. Lucas and I have been married for four years, and it's been two since Alexander was born. But during this time, we haven't really had much interaction, not even over the phone. What could be the issue? I'm at a loss. Maybe I'm overthinking it. We were planning to leave later that day, so I decided to wait until we had a chance to talk to Lucas about it. For now, I try to push it out of my mind. Returning to the living room and taking Alexander from Lucas, father-in-law presents him with an envelope. Here you go, Alexander. A little something for you. Alexander's face lights up with joy as he receives the gift. Sophia, did you hear that? Alexander just thanked me. Such a clever boy. Father-in-law beams with pride. But what strikes me is the strange weight in my hand as I hold the envelope. Hmm, why does it feel so heavy? I wonder aloud, noticing the peculiar grins exchanged between my mother-in-law and sister-in-law as soon as Alexander receives the envelope. When my father-in-law handed me the envelope the day before, I hadn't sensed anything unusual, but now I couldn't help but wonder, could he have really slipped a hundred dollars in here? Is that even appropriate? I decided to attribute it to my parents' doting affection for Alexander. With our home just a 30-minute drive away, we had lunch and then set off after giving Alexander a bath and tucking him into bed. Curious about the contents of the envelope, I peeked inside. Ah, it is indeed a hundred dollars, just like last year. Huh, I can't help feeling a bit guilty. Well, I suppose we'll need to reciprocate somehow, won't we? Just like the previous year, my parents hadn't held back. Being their only child, and with Alexander being their first grandchild, I understood their overwhelming fondness. Nonetheless, I was slightly taken aback. Yet, I also felt appreciative, so I made a note of the amount received. Interestingly, my dad seemed equally enthusiastic, perfectly in tune with my father-in-law. This year is shaping up to be quite intriguing, I mused. Last year, since we couldn't meet, they sent us a gift card, right? And it had a hundred dollars on it. They were overjoyed to have a grandson, weren't they? I reminisced about my father-in-law's delighted demeanor as he held Alexander the day before. Continuing the conversation, I reached for the envelope. That's when the unexpected occurred. Wait, what? A leaf? To my bewilderment, there was a single green leaf inside the envelope. I was speechless. Lucas, startled by my reaction, exclaimed, A leaf? What in the world? He burst into laughter. But amid the confusion, I couldn't shake off thoughts about my mother-in-law and Isabella. Could it be possible? Regardless, I decided to give them a call. They'd surely share my concern. Lucas seemed to think it was all a prank and chuckling, attempted to call my father-in-law, but there was no answer. Maybe they're in the shower. Let me try calling mom, he suggested. Dialing his mother's number, Lucas explained the situation about the leaf. From her surprised response, it was evident she was clarifying something to Lucas. Oh, that's what it was. All right, I'll let Sophia know. What? You want to speak to Sophia? Me? Hold on a moment. Lucas relayed her message. Lucas lowered the phone from his ear, a puzzled expression on his face. Mom sounds really sorry. She wants to apologize to you, Sophia. Is that all right? Huh. Um, sure. I responded, taken aback by his unexpected words. Reluctantly, I accepted the phone from Lucas and tentatively greeted, ah, uh, hello. There was nothing but silence from the other end. Then faint laughter, eerily familiar, echoed in the background, resembling Isabella's voice. Hello, mother-in-law. I tried again. Apologize to someone like you? Never. You with your pitiful existence, came the venomous reply. Your gifts are as worthless as a leaf. Goodbye, paper wife.
With that shocking barrage, she abruptly ended the call. In that moment, I realized yesterday's events had been orchestrated out of spite. What's wrong, Sophia? You seem off, Lucas inquired, noticing my distressed expression. But how could I ever explain to him what had just transpired? First, I needed to ascertain what my mother-in-law had told him. Hey, what did your mom say to you? I asked. It turns out Dad accidentally mixed up the gifts Ava had prepared. Remember when Isabella and her family came over for Christmas? Dad had already prepared some monetary gifts, and then Ava wanted to chip in too. Somewhere along the line, she decided to add a leaf from the garden as a little bonus. Looks like it got swapped with the money, Lucas explained. I see. What's wrong, Sophia? You seem troubled, he added, concern evident in his voice. I was left speechless, stunned by the sudden accusation of being labeled a poverty-stricken wife. It was a situation I had never encountered before, and I struggled to find the right words to respond. Actually, I... I began, but before I could continue, a call interrupted us, flashing my father-in-law's name on the screen. Oh, sorry, Dad. Maybe he's calling back, Lucas remarked, placing the phone on the table and switching it to speaker mode. The phone rustled, prompting Lucas to inquire, huh? Dad, did you call by mistake? Huh? Lucas? Oh, it says Lucas on the phone, came the confused voice of my father-in-law. Huh? Ava, is that you? Lucas asked, recognizing the voice. Yeah, you got it. It turns out Ava was the one who called back using Grandpa's phone. Ava chimed in. You're going to get in trouble with Grandpa, Eva, she added. That's fine, I wanted to talk. Grandpa's in the shower, it's all good. Plus, Grandpa always says we should answer the phone when it rings, so I'm talking for him, Ava explained. It's nice that Ava enjoys talking on the phone, but this isn't really the right time, Lucas apologized, sensing the tension in the room. Oh, really? Well, that's a bummer. Bye, Lucas, and bye, poor auntie. Ella concluded. Wait, Ava, huh? What's up? What did you say at the end? Lucas questioned, picking up on Ava's last statement. Both Lucas and I couldn't ignore what Ava had just said. It sounded like poor wife, which was a term mommy's grandma also used to refer to auntie. Ava, could you explain to Lucas what you meant earlier? I asked, seeking clarification. Earlier? When grandma was on the phone? Ava confirmed. Yes, I replied. So here's the thing. Auntie once mentioned this to me. It's about the leaf. Grandma used to prepare the leaf with a smile and taught me all about it. She said that for those less fortunate, monetary gifts equate to a single leaf. Ava explained. Lucas and I exchanged bewildered glances, unsure of how to respond. Meanwhile, my sister-in-law, who had overheard Ava's phone call, shouted, Ava! But just as she did, my father-in-law intervened, saying, we'll talk about it later. Feeling bewildered by the unfolding events, I watched as Ava handed the phone back to my father-in-law. Sorry about that. I was in the shower. Then when I got dressed and came out, I found Ava saying something outrageous. He apologized. So, you heard it too, Dad. Lucas confirmed. I'm sorry, Lucas. Could you hand the phone to Sophia? My father-in-law requested. No worries, Dad. We're all on speaker. Sophie is listening too, Lucas assured him. All right. My father-in-law responded with a heavy sigh, his voice betraying a sense of tension. In the background, my mother-in-law and sister-in-law were speaking rapidly and agitatedly, as if attempting to concoct excuses. I am truly sorry. Please don't blame Ava. She didn't mean any harm. My father-in-law's voice conveyed remorse over the phone. No, it's all right. We don't hold Ava responsible. Thank you for letting us know. I'll address this issue further. Isabella is here too. We'll discuss this with her, I reassure him. With that, he ended the call. Lucas turned to me, expressing his apologies. I'm really sorry. I have no idea what's going on. He was clearly perplexed. I proceeded to share with him the discomfort I had been feeling during my visits to Lucas at house. Together, we decided to await further communication from my father-in-law. To our surprise, a response arrived sooner than expected. Even more astonishingly, the very next day, 
Isabella's husband drove my father-in-law, mother-in-law, and Isabella to our house. As they entered, they stood before us, a solemn mother-in-law and sister-in-law, with my father-in-law and Isabella's husband, expressing heartfelt apologies. We have behaved in a manner that is deeply disrespectful. We are sincerely sorry. We apologize for the unacceptable conduct of my wife, my father-in-law conveyed with sincerity. Though we appreciated the profound apology, my mother-in-law and sister-in-law remained silent throughout the encounter, not uttering a single word. After four years of marriage, I found myself baffled by the sudden hostility directed towards me. Despite our infrequent encounters, I mustered the courage to ask, Um, may I inquire why you've been acting this way towards me? I hoped that understanding their reasoning might help resolve the tension. Perhaps there's been a misunderstanding, I thought, but my question was met with silence as they continued to ignore me. Father-in-law, visibly angered by their behavior, intervened sharply. Answer her. Reluctantly, Isabella responded, revealing a surprising revelation. Well, mom initially opposed the marriage. That's it? But why? Why would you allow him to marry someone like her? Someone who doesn't even indulge in branded items? Who dresses in modest, off-the-rack clothing? It was true. I have little interest in luxury brands, unlike Isabella, who favor designer goods, and my mother-in-law, who owned a collection of branded items. So, are you saying this is solely because of that? I pressed on, disbelieving. Really? That's all it is? I simply don't want her in our family. I wish Dick would divorce soon, and she would just disappear, Isabella retorted callously. How could you utter such disrespect? And what about you? Why are you supporting such a woman? You're a successful professional, an elite. Shouldn't you choose a more suitable partner for our family? Despite Lucas' prestigious career as a medical practitioner, they remained resolute, asserting, we cannot accept someone like her into our family, can we? Upon hearing Isabella's unfiltered sentiments, her husband fell into stunned silence. Yet this silence was brief, soon to be interrupted by my mother-in-law's revelation. This disposition was inherited from her, she remarked pointedly. Initially, you see, I have found a suitable partner for Lucas. Despite that, he brought home some unknown woman and announced they were getting married. It was quite a shock. What? You were doing such a thing without informing us? There are boundaries to what's acceptable to do to Sophia. She continued, her tone incredulous. Um, it's not a big deal, right? She's just a poor girl, isn't she? Her parents didn't leave much of an impression either. Rather impoverished, don't you think? Not a single designer label in sight. In essence, she hails from a financially struggling background, doesn't she? My mother-in-law interjected. What? What are you implying? And to love a child born of such a woman? Unthinkable. It would tarnish our precious Ava. We had already arranged for her to marry a friend's child. Lucas, caught in the crossfire of his family's revelations, found himself at a loss for words. I share his sentiment grappling with the shock of uncovering these hidden feelings. Suddenly, it all clicked into place. My father-in-law's disinterested phone call now made perfect sense. If you perceive this as harassment, then perhaps divorce is the best course of action. Please proceed as soon as possible. Let's leave. There's no need to prolong this charade any further. My mother-in-law concluded, her words cutting and final. Just as my father-in-law appeared poised to speak, I felt a surge of determination to rectify the misunderstanding and uphold my pride. However, before I could interject, the living room door swung open dramatically, revealing none other than my own parents. It's been a while, father-in-law, mother-in-law. Did Sophie reach out to you? My father asked casually, cutting through the tension with ease. It must be difficult to endure such slander without a chance to defend yourself, he added knowingly. I had anticipated my father-in-law's visit and had promptly informed my parents. Apparently, they had overheard some of my mother-in-law's derogatory remarks from outside the door. Their timing couldn't have been more impeccable. My parents approached my mother-in-law with stern expressions. What's the matter? She inquired, taken aback by their serious demeanor. Without a word, 
My parents retrieved their business cards from their breast pockets and extended them towards my mother-in-law, their actions silently conveying, take a look. To my amusement, Isabella took the bait, seizing the opportunity to grab the business card and unleash a torrent of insults. Arrogance oozing from a person of humble means. You aren't even adorned in designer labels today, and your attire reeks of mass production, she exclaimed indignantly. As she examined the card, my mother startled, and even my mother-in-law glanced at it with interest. You two are executives at Ballet Clo? My mother-in-law read aloud, her tone betraying a hint of surprise. Yes, my husband and I founded the company together. He holds an executive position at the headquarters, and I oversee planning. Our daughter stepped down after her marriage, as you're aware, my mother explained confidently. Both applied parents currently hold positions at the headquarters of Valet Clo, a renowned low-cost apparel brand. Even after I graduated from college, I continued to work there. Although I had discussed my background with my father-in-law and mother-in-law prior to our marriage, my parents had never fully disclosed their professional status. So she could return to work whenever she chooses, right? My father-in-law exclaimed in astonishment. That's incredible. You're employed at such a prestigious fashion brand's corporate headquarters. So what exactly do you mean by calling us poor? Implying that my grandchild is the offspring of a destitute wife. Is it justifiable to harass us simply because you oppose the marriage? I interjected, my frustration palpable. It isn't. We sincerely apologize, my mother-in-law interjected. But it was evident that this apology stemmed solely from my parents' esteemed job positions. Clearly, the situation had escalated beyond the point where a mere apology could rectify matters. Henry, visibly disappointed, interjected, I thought it was a good idea to entrust Ava to my parents' care, but with this, I'll take you back, but once we're there, we're going our separate ways, Henry declared firmly. What? What do you mean? I responded, taken aback by his sudden resolve. I'm grateful to have finally seen your true colors. Let's talk about divorce once we're home, he continued, his tone resolute. With that, Henry left the house, leaving me stunned. In that moment, my father-in-law rose from his seat, offering a deep apology to my parents. I'm truly sorry for everything that has occurred, he expressed sincerely. Turning towards us, he added, I apologize once again. We'll keep in touch. Then, fixing a stern gaze upon my mother-in-law, who appeared visibly shaken, he cautioned, prepare yourself for when you return home. With that, he too left our residence, prompting my mother-in-law and Isabella to hastily gather their belongings.